Doesn't feel as sexy this morning after a Grizzlies loss, Robbie. I got to be honest with you, man. Long season. It's a long season. Long season. First time you've lost to a team that is under 500 on the year. Heat lost to the Memphis Grizzlies last night. 15 minutes of heat is brought to you by Comcast. Get the speed, coverage, and control you need with Xfinity x file Also brought to you by Brandsmart USA. Buying the Brandsmart way for the holiday season means the lowest prices and the largest selections of TVs, appliances, mattresses, cell phones, and more. Leroy might want to visit there after he just uh, dropped his computer to see if they got anything for him. Visit your local Brandsmart USA store today. He fought the Memphis Grizzlies last night. They lose 118-111. Jimmy Butler had 25 points, 8 assists. Came in off the bench in the fourth quarter, scored 7 straight points, put the Heat back in position to take a lead. Um, but it was a couple of things. All right, first of all, you know, you look up and down the box score, you're basically playing eight guys right now. You're playing eight guys. At some point, it's going to catch up to it's you. It's going to catch up to you. Like, you haven't had Justice Winslow. Uh, you haven't had Goran Dragic. And those are your two point guards. And they also, like, for Goran, I mean, let's not forget what Goran was doing for this team uh, in, in the early goings of this season. That he That's was, 20 points gone. Yeah, he's just he, he's, he is an absolute spark plug off the bench, and you just don't got it anymore. Uh, you know, Justice Winslow, you know, we did a lot of talking about the fit with the, with without Jimmy Butler. What's that going to be? How's it going to be? But one thing that you could say about Justice Winslow is, you know, especially with the in- inconsistencies, on, inconsistencies on offenses, you know, the guy does take a burden away defensively. You could throw him at guys, and I think that takes a lot of pressure off of Jimmy Butler. It takes a lot of pressure off Bam Adebayo to have to go and defend all these important possessions. Like, one of the big things that happened – uh, and really switched yesterday is when the Heat were going on their run, Bam picked up his fifth foul. Um, and, you know, I I always like, even when you have your fifth foul, once that game is winding down and it's in balance, like I kind of just want the guy to go for broke and, you know, just do what you can do. And if you if you get fouled, you get fouled. And I, I hope as Bam, who congratulations, got his first player of the week, uh, mm-hmm. starts to impose his will on that stuff. I feel like it's important to do that, to, to get it in the ref's mind, to let him play a little bit more. Uh, to get that respect around the league, but he but he didn't. I mean, like, look, you, you play him with five fouls. He knows he can't leave the game right. because he is so damn important. And you just felt there was a real temperament and switch in the defense once he picked up that fifth foul uh, for the Heat late late yesterday. He was playing with basically four in the fourth quarter the entire time. Right. Um. And you let too. I mean, look, a lot way too. Uh, the, the 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 Grizzlies were torn from from three point land. That's way too many points in the first half, 73 points. But that that's – like, I think sometimes in the NBA, those things happen where you just get hot from three. You, you know what I mean? Like, a team – like, I can understand. We're not talking about the Golden State Warriors of last year. We're talking about a team, you go into the game and say, hey, they were average at shooting three-pointers. Mm-hmm. They get hot. And they and like if you go look at the the end of the game, like they were thirteen to thirty six. They shoot thirty seven percent. Right, it's, but it's they were like good, it's a they, good game. They were like eleven to sixteen to start the game. Yeah. So from that standpoint, um, it happens, and and so you can't. I mean, like when somebody has a great play, you don't change your game plan based on a, a snippet of. You know what happens in in a game, right? You basically still have to play the tendencies of of that team, and if they get hot, they get hot. For example, like there's guys that as soon as they catch the ball, you back off of them. Mm-hmm. If they start making threes, do you then go play defense on them? No. Yeah, there was a there was a there was a, a killer possession towards the end of that game. You remember this, Robbie? Where there was. The non nonstop, uh, the, you know, it was it was two offensive rebounds missed. So Grizzlies got three tries, ended yeah. up converting on it. That was a real backbreaker, right? Those, I mean, those are killers. And you know, this is this is one of those games where he got out rebounded by ten. Uh, a lot of that was down the stretch. And that see, th- those are the if you want to look at what caused the Heat to game. You know, it's not all the things that you're supposedly talking about. It's not that. The Grizzlies got hot from three. It's the little things, right? One shot, and you're out of there. Mm-hmm. No, nope, they kept getting second chances and third chances. And when that happens and those become threes, 
then you got a problem. Because although they may have shot three threes at that moment, the fact that they got the three opportunities is what's the problem. And so they got out rebounded. Guess what? That's a problem. Let's uh, let's hear from the Heat head coach Eric Spolstra after yesterday's game. Not happy with the Heat's defensive performance. Doesn't guarantee anything, but that's what uh, you uh, you have to bring every single uh, night, and particularly on the road, it, it's hard to win. This team has been playing extremely well. Now after this, they've won four out of five. Uh, they have a lot of young talent that uh, is is growing and getting better uh, quickly as the season's going on, and they they got in such an incredible rhythm in that first half. Might have been our worst uh, defensive half uh, of the season. You know, finishing plays basically all across the board. It was pretty uninspiring. Um, we picked up our activity level in the second half, fourth quarter a little bit was uh, maybe due to the zone, but. You know, those those uh, back breaking uh, second chance opportunities really, uh, really hurt us. Yeah, it really was. It was a killer. Now, Jimmy Butler, he always takes loss as well. Uh, let's hear from the Heat star player as he was uh, none too pleased afterwards with the Heat's defensive effort. We just didn't guard nobody, man, from the beginning of the game. And uh, I think that's the that's the direction that we're trending in right now. Um, I, I feel like we got to take it personal. I mean, that doesn't mean enough to us right now to, to man up and and take the challenge. And uh, that's what happens. We deserve it. Here's a little bit more from Jimmy Butler. We just didn't guard nobody, man, from the beginning of the game. And uh, I think that's the, that's the direction that Remix. we're trending in right now. Um, I, I feel like we got to take it personal. I mean, it, that doesn't mean enough to us right now you know, to, just to man up and... Thing, right? and take the challenge, and uh, that's what happens. We deserve it. Is there anything that you've noticed that's caused the slippage in that space? No, nah, you just got to want to do it. Um, yeah, I play with a lot of effort, and whenever you don't, this is what happens. Part of the league, yeah, whatever, but um, if we want to get to where we say we want to get to, we got we to gotta figure it out. And they have been allowing a lot of points. And I, yes. I do remember from – it was the Hawks game, and it was the last Heat game I was in the locker room for, and that was the game where everybody was putting up numbers for the Heat. I mean, you had Duncan Robinson breaking records. Kendrick Nunn was nearly breaking records. Right. Bam out of bio had his first triple-double. Uh, and then Jimmy Butler spoke, and Jimmy Butler was like, it's great, but, you know, you're giving up 121 points to the Hawks, and we're in overtime. Catch you know, up you're, play- you're playing with fire against the Bulls. Uh, these are not good teams. Uh, I, you know, people were upset about the Mavericks. The Mavericks loss, I don't, I don't put up there. I don't care if Luka. Like last night, the the Mavericks beat the Bucks in Milwaukee without Luka Doncic. Like they're good. So, they're good. They're a good team. I, I, I don't understand why so many Heat fans were crazy about that. Um, just because you feel like Luka Doncic goes out, that all of a sudden that they're complete bums. I know he's he's been having an incredible season, but you just saw they were able to beat the a team on an 18 game winning streak in their house. So, I don't feel like you should look at that and and just dismiss, "Oh, yeah, they th- th- that's stupid to me." You're not at a point with the Miami Heat where you, you go and get wins second out of a back-to-back on the road and you're like, "Yeah, but you didn't win with style." No, but, no, but, no, but, no, but games against that. the Hawks and the Bulls, it's a little bit different. Right. You got you you want to go and you want to go take care of your business. I'm not expecting them to go blow everybody out right. like they were to start the year. Um, but you can tell Jimmy Butler was like, he's a smart guy. He's been in the league forever, and he could tell that. All right, we're not exact. We're doing the hard things just enough, but not necessarily from the jump. And last night it bit him in the ass with the Grizzlies. He's um, he's basically <laughs> basically was telling the guys against the Hawks, "Hey, the Bills gonna be due. Yeah, we play basketball a certain s- style." We 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 build our team. Our team is built on defense first, and if at any point in time we don't do that, we may win some games, but we're not going to be good for the long term. And, and, and so, from that standpoint, but but here's here's the the issue. You got maybe four guys who are legitimate, four or five guys legitimate defenders. And the other guys are scorers. Yeah. And and, then- and so from that standpoint, you have to be a little patient with what you're asking because guess what? When a, when a three-point shooter gets hot, chances are his defense ain't going to be the greatest. Well, the other thing, too, is, you know, you get into these matchups with the bigger teams. And yes. 
you know, you're looking at last night, you're two outside of Bam, who, who wasn't fantastic yesterday. I mean, he had a double double, but you know, he's four twelve from the field. You obviously in a in a thin lineup like this, you you need a little bit more from from a guy who just won Eastern Conference Player of the Week. But you look at Myers Leonard, and Myers Leonard kind of just gives you token starting minutes. Like, let's think about it. He comes, he starts both halves. It's probably going to get you about six minutes apiece. And that's it. And he and he's you know he plays seventeen minutes. He's playing seventeen minutes a night. La, uh, you know, last night Kelly Olynyk was off, and Kelly Olynyk Kelly Olynyk's like it's feast or famine with him. Like he'll he'll come out and he'll give you a good game like once every three games, and then he'll give you some stinkers. And so then you look, it's like, well, where's the size and the rest of this lineup? It's is it's, that going to be the, is that going to be the thing that they end up. Yeah, that ends up hurting them the most. Well, this is the thing, because I, I know you'll get a lot of people who are like, see, this is why you need Deion Waiters around, and you need to... When I look at a game like last night, I'm not missing Deion Waiters. But the other guy that I do think um, you're missing yes. is, is... Justice Ma- Winslow. Well, I wasn't and, even going to go there. I wasn't really? even going to go to... Yes, you obviously miss Justice Winslow and Goran Dragic. Well, cause just, I'm saying Justice just for the size yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and on defense. I'm not even talking about scoring. But I'm not I'm not talking about a health thing. I'm talking about uh, is, it, maybe it's time to take James Johnson out of the doghouse and give him some minutes because he can give you some size. He can handle some. You could throw him defensively some at some guys and get him primed up for something. Right, but what if he wasn't... The reason why he's there is because he wasn't playing great defense when he was out there I know but but how how good is he supposed to get if he's not playing at all like in a game where you're given you're playing eight guys for real because Chris Silva played three minutes so he didn't play last night right um you're telling me in a game against the Grizzlies where you got the the Sixers coming up a little bit later that they played what three games in four nights Mm -hmm. that you can't throw at that point you just need bodies to throw you you need look in order for the players to understand and everybody else to understand that it's a long season, the Heat need to understand it's a long season. And and it's cool to take these stands, right? Right. But if you take these stands and then lose a, a lot of games in the future because of fatigue and you've pretty much, you know, you're, you're, you're pretty much Frank Vogel, the, the, the Heat, Right. Um, then what? And by the way, I know James Johnson wasn't available last night. I know he's gone for the team for personal reasons, whatever the hell that is, because he's he's hanging on Antonio Brown's Instagram. So I don't know what the hell that means, personal reasons. Um, you know, there's a there's a lot of uh, shiftiness that's been going on with the Heat and what right, they're saying like, is going on. With I guys, get it. So I don't know I, what to believe. Look, I get it. You got to do what you got to do, right? And and from the Heat standpoint, there's probably certain things that look. This is not who we're about, so we got to take this stand yeah. right now. That being said, you're not penalizing the guys that are out. You're penalizing the guys who are playing. Right, in a desperate time. Right, desperate and, time. and so um, this all would be fine if Justice and, and Gorn were playing. Right, but they're not. But they're not, and, and so now you got – And I know there's been some uh, – some people are like, well, it's been very weird – I've been seeing this where, like, uh, on, so it's been very weird that there has been any updates on going, uh, on Justice Winslow. And I think to myself, no, it's not. They always do that. No, it's not. It's, it's normal. In, it's, in fact, out of all the things that have been weird about this season, that is the least weird thing that's been going on. You think I'm going to get an update on, on Justice Winslow's health from the Heat? Right. It's about, it's about the most normal thing Going on with the Heat right now is the fact that you're getting no updates on Justice Winslow. Dude, they did that with Justice Winslow the, 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 when, he was, uh, when he was in his second year. They're like, yeah, Justice is out. Okay, he's having season-ending surgery. Right. Goran Dragic, same thing. Yeah, Goran's out. All right, guys, he's going to have a uh, severe knee surgery. Right. It's, you know, that's, the, the Heat being murky on injuries, what? That, you think that's weird? Right. You're weird. We're back after this.